they respond to Trump and they look back in Trump's uh, presidency and said, hey, my wages were higher, inflation was lower, we weren't at wars all over the place, maybe the guy's a jerk, but the, he's a badass and, and the world fears him. And so, he's a if badass? The, all he does is complain about people. A whiny, vengeful, that's that's backward-looking that's, that's, billionaire. No, that is just that's not like looking. Right, it's that's forward-looking. Forward We're going to take on the administrative state that's driven this country into the ground. He's not talking about taking on the administrative state to help people's lives. He's talking about going after the people that were mean to him. He says, oh, I'm going to have the DOJ target Bill Barr because he was mean to me. I'm going to have the DOJ target John Kelly because he turned on me. I'm going to have the DOJ target Jack that's Smith because he's oh, coming after me. And that's all he talks about. He doesn't talk about helping That's people. That's not true. That's not true. But here's my question. You have a MAGA lawyer who likes to come on your podcast, Mike Davis. Here's what he suggested were the top priorities for Trump's attorney general. One, fire the deep state executive branch. Two, indict the whole Biden family. Three, deport 10 million people, kids in cages. That will be glorious. Four, detain people at Gitmo. Five, pardon every January 6th defendant. What do you think about that five-step plan? I think plan? it's fantastic. We All should do five? It. All five. We're going to start the largest deportation program in history. All 10 million must, must leave. Wow. Part of an exchange with longtime Trump advisor Steve Bannon from the final episode of The Circus. Joining us now, one of the now former co-hosts of The Circus, political strategist Mark McKinnon, plus MSNBC contributor Mike Barnacle, and special correspondent at Vanity Fair, host of the Fast Politics podcast, Molly Jong Fast. You know, uh, Mark McKinnon... Um... <sighs> And, and we talked about this earlier. It used to be sort of a bob and weave where Donald Trump would say something extreme and then back off and go, oh, no, no, I don't mean that. I don't mean that at all. Now, they're all just coming straight. It used to be Bannon would say something crazy and Trump and his people would right. say, no, nah, yeah, that's bah, bah, not bah. the case. No, they're aligned now. I, you know, Bannon said four years, uh, seven years ago, I'm a Leninist. I want to tear down the state. Well, Trump's with him now. Trump is a Leninist. Trump wants to tear down the state. They say they want to arrest the entire uh, Biden family. They want to uh, arrest people, even his former lawyers that, that turned on him. Uh, I mean, this is just full-on fascism, and they're proud of it. Uh, that's what's remarkable, Joe. Molly and I were just talking about it. There's no secret to the secret plan. Believe them when they tell you what they're going to do. I mean, Bannon went on to say that this movement's moving on beyond Trump. The Trump, in, their, in his view, is a moderate. So, uh, you know, they're talking about the greatest deportation in history. Uh, it's pretty chilling. And as you said, uh, the remarkable thing about it is that they're not hiding the ball on this. So everybody should know, team democracy, it's time to suit up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and Willie, it is, again, yes. they're, they're, they're admitting the quiet part out loud, and now Trump's even got to where he's, he's, lifting, he's lifting words and phrases from Hitler's speeches. Yeah, the vermin term. Remember he said, I am your retribution to his supporters. And now not just, not saying that in some vague way, Molly, but now specific plans from people who presumably would be close advisors in, in the administration about how they would go out carrying out that retribution. I mean, you just heard Steve Bannon, take it for what it's worth, he's a podcaster who's probably going to jail soon. <laughs> don't but, don't but, negative on podcasters. No, 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 what I'm saying is, <laughs> obviously, though, influential in the MAGA movement, but um, the fact that he's just saying out loud, yeah, we should just pardon all the people who attack the Capitol, the people who beat up cops on January 6th, let's pardon them. Trump has said that too, by the way. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Republicans and Trumpists have these ideas, they are not popular with the general electorate. Right. They're not. We see this again and again. We saw this in the 2023 off year election. These ideas are not popular. Ballot initiatives by Democrats overperform. We're seeing, you know, this you saw uh, Santorum say Democrats get to run on sexy ideas like legalizing marijuana and abortion. OK, but they're popular. That's what they are. They're popular ideas. And meanwhile, on the Trump side, you have Republicans running on Trump's retribution uh, deporting people, putting people in Gitmo, these are not popular ideas. So isn't, isn't the, uh, one of the larger questions that the country confronts or has to confront is when will America stop sleepwalking towards the end of democracy? Right. I mean, all of us here yeah, at this no, table can recall question. the summer of 2015 when Donald Trump maligned John McCain, <clears throat> maligned his service, <clears throat> maligned his career. Everybody I know said, well, that's it for Trump. 
Right. You know, anybody who says that about John McCain, that's it for Trump. <laughs> well, it wasn't, and it isn't up until this moment in time. He yeah. can be up in Claremont, New Hampshire over the weekend on Veterans Day, yeah. calling Americans vermin. Yeah. On Veterans Day, maligning democracy, outlining exactly what he intends to do. He says the truth out loud, his own truth. Believe him. Yeah. Why, why do we sit here? Why does the New York Times and other major publications not start confronting this? You're right, it's time to suit up. But it's well past halftime. Yeah. I mean, we're in the fourth quarter here. Exactly right. Exactly right. Time to get on the field. It's, it's what's remarkable is... We know from 2015 how that story ends. We know how this one could end. So we, we, we've, we've gotten the preview. Let's go. So, Molly, it seems to me you're right. These are not broadly popular ideas, right. but they are popular among his base. And this is going to be a base turn on election like we've never seen before. Because at least right now, independent swing voters seem like they're unhappy with both choices. And let's just set the motivations aside for that for the moment. So what can the Democrats do? Tell us how can they turn out their base? Because we've seen a, a raft of polls and reporting in right. recent weeks that, that some of the di usual Democratic voters just aren't that enthusiastic about this ticket. Right. And what's interesting about these polls, and again, I... I, I think throw the polls out. But in these polls, there is uh, good news for the generic Dem, right? That number does really well. And that's saying that the Democratic brand is actually not in bad shape, right? right? Despite the fact that there's a lot of talking, you know, a lot of pundits will say the Democratic brand is tarnished. It's not. The Democratic brand is really the only thing that's come out of this that is doing well. And we're seeing it again and again in these special elections. Democrats have popular ideas. They're not too crazy. Amer you know, Republicans went too far, right? Trumpists went too far. De you know, mainstream voters don't like the abortion stuff. They don't like feeling the government is in their bedroom. They don't like it. They it's too much. And so, and especially like the trans panic, you know, that also did not work for Republicans. You know, the book bans. <laughs> Democrats just want, you know, the mainstream <sighs> voters just want normal. And I think trans the panic. Democrats... Yeah. Are, are doing that. The I, lo I love that. The trans panic. I they had, are quite, they're snowflakes. I, I had, I, I, I always, you know, in 22, I had Republican strategists at Colorado and go, hey, what are you going to do this year? Go, yo, you're not going to believe it. People in this state, I won't say the state, it would reveal the guy because he runs yeah. the Republicans sort of operation in this one state. People in this state are going to get 20 different pieces of mail on trans athletes taking their daughter's position in track and a uh, huge, yeah, go, went on and on. And I sat there going to myself, I said, wait a second, aren't these the guys that have been bitching and moaning about the fact that the Democrats aren't talking about inflation, the Democrats yeah. aren't talking yeah. about crime, the Democrats aren't talking about the southern border, and they have this Bizarre obsession, almost like the speaker has this really strange obsession <laughs> on homosexuality. Yeah. And how oh. men doing what they want to do, mm. uh, consenting adults in their bedroom, is going to be the collapse right. of Western civilization. Now, I don't know who obsesses about homosexuality and there's so like much. An that they, system that, that, that and they, 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 yeah, they got this porn, porn sharing service between him and this, this guy. Family. It's all very, it's all something. Somebody helps it's convert all something. people. It's, and then, yeah. It's so really. You got know. all of this stuff going on, Molly. Gosh, and a swirl of funny it. thing happened on the way to every election <laughs> in 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. <laughs> All of these hot button issues, mm. whether it's the southern border or whether it's abortion or whether it's trans athletes, you name it, book burnings, whatever, whatever Republicans wanted to do, they all failed yeah. because Republicans always have lost, always underperformed. Even the House where they barely squeaked by a year before, Kevin McCarthy ever said they're going to win 50 seats. No, they didn't. Why? Because they obsess on these freakish things that a small percentage of their base obsess over.
Yeah. And they made a person, Speaker of the House, who was so out of the mainstream. They could have made someone who was more of a mainstream, you know, candidate for Speaker. And instead, they picked Mike Johnson, who is, who has all of this religious writing, who is nowhere where a mainstream voter is. And I think <clears throat> that they're going to pay for that. I mean, they cannot, they just cannot temper the far right. And so they cannot appeal to mainstream voters. And this is one of the problems with Trump. Trumpism. You just can't keep control over this far right fraction. There's I think also I, like an. Oh, I, go ahead, Mark. I think Mike has it right. I mean, I don't think voters are going to sleepwalk through this. They know what the nightmare is now. They might be napping right now, but I think mm -hmm. I think by the time we get to next year, the stakes are going to be so clear. People are going to be they're going to be jumping out of windows to get to the why aren't the, the why aren't the democrats more to the point on all of this though why, why are the democrats sort of sleepwalking as this was always going on around us well like i, I said mean, i think they're napping i think they're gonna i think they're I gonna mean, the, be up in time for the, next the three, year the three points that well, Joe can, just can, made. can i answer that oh yeah, i'm, so, I'm yeah. sorry go mike yeah, yeah, go yeah. mike and then i'll answer why it, yeah. it seems like they're sleepwalking but go ahead mike well the the three mm -hmm. points that you just mentioned joe you know the the trans panic the book burning uh, abortion and everything like that. Why don't the Democrats say, hey, this party, a particular slice of this party, the, a dominant slice of this party, the Republican Party, they want to fool around with your family. Yeah. They want to come into your house and tell you, no, you can't do that in Andy bed. Bichetta. No, you can't do that with your child. No, you can't do this with your, with your kids in school. Yeah. And Andy Bashir yeah. did that. Yeah, he did. And he won by and a much he... larger margin. <laughs> and he won... In the state of, of Kentucky. Kentucky, where Donald so Trump won by 25 points. Yeah, yeah. So that's quite a lot. I, I will say, 